All right, guys, I had a lot of requests for explaining how certain nuclear reactions work. Today we're going to start with fission, which is what happens when one thing breaks up into a bunch of other things. It's like a decomposition reaction, but because you're messing with protons and neutrons and light and stuff like that, it's actually a nuclear reaction that gets a special name called fission. This is how, uh, you know, atomic weapons work and uh, atomic energy, like uranium and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't know, I'll block this video from being shown in Iran or something. All right, first thing I want to point out is that when you have an element, the type of element, in this case uranium, is controlled by the number of protons that it has. Uranium is defined as any atom that has 92 protons. See, that's why it has a little 92 there. This number, the you know, superscripted and before the atom symbol, is the number of protons plus neutrons. It's called the mass number. Here's my point, is protons weigh one atomic mass unit and have a plus charge. Neutrons weigh its one atomic mass unit and have no charge. And in all of these nuclear reactions, your masses of protons and protons plus neutrons have to be the same on both sides. Check it out, 234 plus four, I'm counting the top numbers, equals 238. These numbers have to add up to the same amount on both sides. 92 equals 90 plus two. And okay, we're always gonna remember that. It's gonna make these things the most easy reactions in the world for you. First kind of fission, alpha radiation. This is what happens when you give off a helium ion, or rather, uh, well, I call it a helium nucleus, but I'm not exactly sure about the electrons. Point is two protons, two neutrons, total mass of four. Check it out, when uranium-238 breaks apart to give thorium-234, what are we missing? Well, the masses have to add up to the same thing on both sides. So that means we're missing a mass of four here. 234 plus what? Gives us 238, the answer is four. You're a genius for figuring that one out. Anyways, 92 protons on this side, 90 left in thorium. Where'd the other two go? I don't know. Actually, I do know. Two protons and two neutrons were ejected as a helium nucleus, and that was called an alpha particle. This is how you make alpha particles. Remember back in the day you learned about the Bohr, Ruth, the Bohr, no, Rutherford's gold foil experiment, and he shot some alpha particles out of a box. These are the alpha particles, helium nuclei. Check it. There's another kind of radiation you can get from nuclear fission reactions. It's called beta radiation. Beta radiation is just electrons, though. The question is, where do the electrons come from? The answer is, the electrons come from a neutron just breaking apart. Literally, it just breaks apart. The neutron breaks apart into a proton and an electron. I get that that weirds you out because you're a chemist. Quantum physicists love this stuff. You don't have to love it, you just have to know how to work it. Neutron breaks into a proton plus electron and actually gives off a little bit more energy in the form of something called an anti-neutrino, which I never really understood, never really cared about. When iodine-131 breaks apart and gives you xenon-131, you look at that and you're like, wait a second, the number of protons went up. Where is it, how is it, the number of protons gonna go up? The answer is one of the neutrons broke apart and gave you an extra proton. But for that to happen, you need to eject an electron. Check it out. 53 equals 54 plus what? Well, actually, the answer there is negative one because your number of protons went up. You have to account for that here. Your total mass didn't change at all because remember, neutrons and protons weigh the same amount. No change there. But you are ejecting an electron. This is how we write beta radiation when your number of protons goes up but your mass stays the same. Third kind, gamma radiation, which is like the easiest one of all because there's no change in mass, there's no change in protons, there's no change in neutrons, it's just light being given off. 
The most common way you're familiar with this is some excited atom, that's what the little star means, just going back down to its lower energy state. Like uh, if a, an electron in the fourth shell got excited up to the seventh one, it absorbed some energy and the electron jumped up. That electron's gotta come back down to the ground state and to do that it has to give off energy. It gives off that energy in the form of light which we write as zero, zero, gamma. The gamma represents the light. This represents that no mass is actually changing. Cobalt 60 actually does this as well when it decays into nickel 60 and gives off beta radiation. It actually also produces gamma radiation or light when that happens. But again, notice 60 and 60 those equal each other and there's no change in mass from the particles that were ejected. 27 and 28, well, we did gain a proton. That's why this beta particle is here. Anyways, the last kind that I want to talk about is called a positron, which is much more rare to see in chemistry, but just in case any of you physicists are watching, I'm going to cover it. This is what happens when a proton breaks up into a neutron and not an electron. It's actually called a positron. It's the same as, as an electron, except it has a plus charge. Go figure. When carbon 11 breaks up into boron 11, what you'll notice is we've actually lost a proton, but our mass hasn't changed. That's because the proton has decomposed into a neutron, but for that to happen, you actually have to have no change in mass, lose one proton and actually an electron or a particle with the same mass as an electron but with the opposite charge is ejected and it's called a positron. All right guys, there's your four kinds of radiation, positron, gamma, beta, and alpha. Each has a different special way to write it and you should be able to guess which kinds are produced in any kind of reaction because the number of new, no, protons has to add up on both sides and the total mass number has to add up on both sides. If you think something's whack, it's probably because one of these was ejected. So you're allowed to add negative one and one proton without having a change in mass. All right, hey guys, it's nuclear fission reactions. Best of luck in your own nuclear endeavors. I don't know, whatever, best of luck.